And now it's time for my annual E3 visit with the co-founder and CEO of Ubisoft, uh, Eve Gimo. Eve, uh, you've been so kind to come on our show. Every year it's a tradition after your press conference, and I was telling you when you came in, I think everyone online agrees, you guys just crushed it this year. It was uh, incredible to see all that news, you know, innovative new IP, VG&E 2, Far Cry, Assassins, a tight show, like mm -hmm. just over an hour. Uh, I felt good about it, but how did you feel? Oh, we, we, we liked it very much. Yes. Um, what, what we liked the most is actually the reaction we have from uh, all the people online. Yeah. So that, that was the best part, I would yes. say. Well, I know it's hard to sort of pull that all together and all the news and announcements, so there's lots we can talk about, but I gotta first ask you about uh, BG&E 2, which I think probably every year I've asked you about this show, and you're like, well, we're wait, you know, waiting for Michelle Ansel to tell us when he's ready. Um, you know, that game, I, I don't you probably know more than I do, but it was probably like seven, eight years ago you had that first sort of tease of it um, at the end of the press conference, and then we heard nothing for a long time. Then you come back with this incredible piece. Uh, tell us, why was, why was this year the right year to, to talk about it again? Uh, Michel wanted to really work with um, all the, the, um, the people that played the game, yeah. you know, to help, to, to work with them to really create something yep. new. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, it's the right time now to go yeah. uh, and speak about the game and ask for feedback on okay. everything we do. So well, that's really what made him decide to talk about it. To now, talk about the what game. we saw here, this, is, uh, this isn't like in-engine, this is kind of like a concept CG piece for it? Yeah, it's actually, um, Michel really created all those characters yeah. and uh, he, he worked with a, an outside company as yeah. well. Um, to, to make it oh, happen, beautiful. but it, it, he's really the guy who, you know, told them what to do, how exactly. to do it, and... Uh, to introduce the vision to the world. That's right, and um, to each character also. Wow, well, yeah, it looks absolutely incredible. So where is, you know, I know he said in the press conference, sort of, you know, email us if you want to be a part of this. What does that mean? Is it sort of like, is it going to be an open, kind of like early access type of game where people will get feedback early, or how is that going to manifest itself? You will have to ask him okay. exactly <laughs> how, how he's going to do it, but yeah. the the... The goal is really to make sure he can share um, a certain number of uh, elements with uh, on the world, on yeah. our, uh, on the rules of that world, and yeah. uh, on also how you know how it it will go, yep. um, and to get feedback from uh, all the community and mm -hmm. actually ask them to help him create um, a part of the game. Wow. Um, so is it in active development now? There's a team working on it? Oh yes, for sure. Like, like Michel said, you know, they've yeah. been working for three years now on okay. a new, totally new engine. Okay. And uh, it's, this engine is, uh, is, it can be seen at the, um, at the show. Actually. Oh really? You'll, you'll yeah, have yeah, the actual so, gameplay at the show? Yeah, it, w it will be behind closed doors. Okay. So, but, uh, you don't have it here for us? No, I'll no, come, no. I'll have to come no. over and see. But he, wow. he's going to show, you know, you, you will be able to play in that engine today. Oh wow! Well, that, that I know that's a, a game that's very close to your heart, um, and Jeez. working with Michelle and you know all that you guys have done together. So uh, I'm so excited that that's uh, coming out. Is there any sense of like it's still a few years till this game will be ready? You know, uh, it's 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 on the way, and uh, really the what what's very important to consider is that collaboration he wants yeah. with uh, with all the people that can have you know an impact. All the, the ones game. that are always writing you on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter asking for more. You sort of gave the fans what they wanted, right? Yeah, and he wants to organize this, um, you know, collaboration. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not new, but right. you know, it's, it will be new on on BGE. &E. And will the fans? Is that sort of like, are the fans going to help like fund the game, or is it something that's more just creative, or how is that going to work? It's not in the funding. Okay, you it's know, not the like funding. It's going to yeah. be uh, to be Ubisoft. You got that covered. Uh, yes, exactly. that's right. <laughs> and uh, no, no, it's you know, creatively. Yeah. You know, we we are very interested to. Iterate get, based on yeah, the Yeah, iterate so based on, because that world is just yeah. enormous and uh, there are so many possibilities. Uh, so he wants um, the result to be yeah. really what people expect. Wow, well, it's uh, very exciting news. And, that, you know, sometimes like that would be enough for a press conference. But then it's like you have, you know, I think two other brand new sort of IPs, you know, opening the press conference with Miyamoto-san, yeah, uh, you know, cool. which is, you know, pretty special for you. So it feels like this is one of the years where like all the stars align for you, right? It's like lots of games, lots of news. Um, and that's, I mean, a preview, I guess, of the next few years for Ubisoft in a way, right? Because that's part of the tension I think these game companies have. You saw Bethesda last night said, oh, we're only going to show you what's coming out this year. 
and you decided to sort of, you know, show a little bit more of a roadmap of like here's 2018, you know, maybe even 2019 and beyond. Tell me about that sort of decision, because I go through that a lot with game companies at the Game Awards, other things where people are always saying, oh, we're going to have a tight little campaign, and you guys decide, no, we want to give people a much further view into where we're going, sort of like what PlayStation sometimes does. Um, tell me about that sort of tension and why you decided to you know, share so much with the audience. Well, what's very important more and more is uh, to be able to do uh, alpha, beta, yeah. and uh, to really get feedback and work with you know, the community the, early. The, the community early. Yeah. Uh, and also, not only that, but also make sure that we debug, we, yeah. we test uh, different formulas. Yeah. Uh, and now we have to yeah. show those games early yeah. enough so that you know, we can get that feedback. And no leaks, right? It's like there's sometimes leaks, but there, you're like, people are like always make fun of all their leaks, but it's like there was some stuff there that people did not know was coming. That's right. No, so <laughs> we, we were really proud about, about that <laughs> because, you know, they, we had so many leaks yeah. that uh, we were really afraid that we couldn't keep those. Yes. Uh, you know, those games, you know. Uh, but you did, right? And that, we was, did. Yeah, that was great that was... to see. I wanted to ask you a bit about um, Xbox One X yesterday, the yes. announcement of that. Um, you know, you guys obviously have a partnership with them for yes. Assassin's Creed, but overall, I think in the industry, you know, some gamers looked at it and said, "Oh, it's, it's really cool, but feels you know very expensive." And you know, I'm already happy with my Xbox One S. What do you think the the One X? What does that add to the market? Is it any different than a PS4 Pro? Do you think it's just sort of you know it's an upgrade for the Xbox audience, or is that something that might actually start to get PlayStation gamers to to move to Xbox because it is the most powerful system? I think you know, like uh, like ever in this industry, um, more power uh, is always fantastic for us yep. uh, publishers. Yeah. And uh, Microsoft is doing a fantastic job in in bringing uh, you know this uh, this GPU, which is at a level that nobody expected. So yeah. I think it's going to help our games to be uh, better. You love the competition. They push each other. Yeah, to we, get that, we right? do. We do love that. <laughs> Uh, what about the Switch? Obviously, you know, a huge partnership with Nintendo, um, which is really special. Tell me, how, you know, a little bit more. How did that come together? Because Mr. Miyamoto, obviously, you know, uh, has to be very selective about how he, what he spends his time on. How did that sort of? What was the you know gestation of that partnership? How did that come together? Yeah, sure. The, as as you know, we have been very close to Nintendo yep. uh, for a long time, and uh, the last game we did uh, with them was uh, Rayman. Yep. Uh, really. Uh, we we have been dealing also a lot on uh, with uh, Just Dance, doing uh, mm -hmm. lots of creative work with Nintendo. And <clears throat> what when we saw that machine coming, you know, having mobility on top of accessibility, uh, really we said we have to to do something strong. Yeah. And uh, the team at Nintendo wanted to do something also special yep. uh, with us. So we started to show um, concepts and. And because we have lots of fans of Nintendo in uh, in Ubisoft, yeah. it was not too difficult to find something that uh, our peop our guys in Ubisoft would love, and yeah. so Nintendo would love. Yeah, well, that's that's a it, the game looks really fun, and the fact that you know again the Nintendo team is collaborating with you yeah. in such a cool way is amazing. You have studios all around the world, but it's like now to have Nintendo as sort of a partner uh, in that game is uh, is really really exciting. One thing that a lot of fans on Twitter were asking me about. Uh, was you know you went through the the presentation, lots of news. But there wasn't anything about new you know, sort of Tom Clancy games. And one thing that a lot of fans have asked about is Splinter Cell. Mm -hmm. um, will we see Splinter Cell come back soon? Uh, I can't say much about that, yeah. but uh, for sure all the Clancy games are um, you know are taken care of. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, we have quite a, a lot uh, on our plate right at the at the moment and. Yeah. Uh, and you know the division continues to, to be played. Uh, Rainbow Six, as you see, is it's is had a really great ramp, right? Yeah, Esports and everything. Yeah. Even even last, uh, I think yesterday was one of the highest uh, number of players playing. Really? So it, it's it's really it continues um, yeah. very well. Okay. And uh, Ghost Recon, as you could see, is yeah. also still extremely popular. So all the Clancy games are, are really coming along. Yeah. So we. We are not. We are products. not forgetting um, Splinter Cell. Yes, give it time. Uh, well, yeah, you have to save things for future years. Uh, one thing, though, I think I wanted to ask you about was, you know, you've talked publicly about this idea of games becoming more of a service and these live service games. And I think Rainbow Six is a great example. You know, launched, I think, did fine, but then it really, you know, sort of continued to ramp up, and more people were playing it. As you said, you know, yeah. here you are, a, a year and a half since that game launched, and it's most players ever. So, how is that changing? 
how you approach development for a franchise like an Assassin's Creed or a Far Cry because you know you took a year off for Assassins last year. Yes. But now you're back this year. Are you still thinking that you're going to, you know, make Assassins an annual franchise or what what did you learn from that year off? What what we learned is that uh, we you know, we really could give uh, the teams um, the possibility to really come with all the, their ideas mm -hmm. uh, and make sure they didn't only have ideas and concepts, but that they could really make Excellent. them happen. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> yes, the the industry is changing because people want to stay with a game or with a universe for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's I compare it to you know between movies and TV series, we more and more players want to learn how to play and then to spend lots of time with their friends or alone, but on something that is going. To, to evaluate uh, a lot, so we, we are really making sure we, our games uh, follow that path mm -hmm. because that's really what they want. So mm -hmm. it's we are pushing, you know, um, all the teams in the, in that direction. Uh, I'm saying pushing, but actually it's sometimes them pushing us. Yep. So <laughs> so no, we we are really well aligned together to to make sure we can give um, a totally new experience that yeah. can last for longer. Do you think Assassins, you'll go back to sort of the yearly cycle now? Was that sort of an odd year to not do one last year? It's difficult to say now, yeah. you know, the, what, what we can say is um, this one um, yeah. should please people. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great iteration on uh, what we've done in the past. Yeah, it looks absolutely so incredible what the team has put together there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, as I said, I think that, you know, you guys are, even Far Cry, it feels like that's, you know, it's a game that even Dan, it's like, it's very on the, it's pushing people in new uncomfortable areas in terms of how they're sort of thinking about the world and what's happening there. But it's, you know, I know you and the team, you know, you always want to push the art form forward if you can mm -hmm. for some of these games. And lots of new IPs, as always. So uh, it, it was a, gu a good year for you guys. And I know you've been someone who's been in this business for more than two decades, trying to push the industry in new areas. So congratulations to you and everyone at all the teams. It looked like it was a, a lot of fun to put that press conference together. No, thank you. And you know, for us, um, we are so much uh, energized by the, everything we receive from the, the players, yeah. the people that love our games, and that's really helping our teams to to put uh, you know lots of energy to create fantastic experiences. No, we and we want you guys to stay independent, keep making the games that you guys make. So, uh, Eve, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. For thank me you too. for coming on the YouTube show. Uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you at the show and. Seeing that Beyond Good and Evil behind the scenes, you got to get me in for that. All right, yeah, you well, will be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right.